Okay, well, good evening, everybody, and uh, uh, we hadn't checked this with each other. Can you still see it, Carl? Can you still see my slides? Oh, uh, yes, I can. There. Oh, okay. Let me see. I'm not getting them here. We can certainly see him out here, and we can actually see your face and uh, Carl's oh, shoulder, good, yeah. too. Tell him it looks good. So as long as you can see it there, uh, Tim, yeah, by I all just, means, please go ahead. Well, I can't see my, I can't see my, oh, there. Yeah, try that and see. Yeah, okay, now we're back. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and or evening, and... Uh, I'm really not going to have much different than John. We didn't to get together and, and talk about these before, but uh, what I have to say and my prices and so on really coincide quite closely with John, so uh, I don't know if that was coincidence or what, but it, it came out, so I'll uh, move along here. Just a couple of, of uh, housekeeping details before we go on. Uh, I do uh, have this presentation on my website. You see my website there. Uh, this one I am not going to change, but I do have a cattle situation and outlook on my website. So most of the charts you see here tonight, if you go just to the cattle situation and outlook, you can find updates in upcoming weeks, but this particular one will not be uh, changed. I did update a couple of slides. I'll try to remember when we get to them. I did update a couple uh, just because of the down market today and so on. And, but like I said, I'll try that, that you might have in your handout if you made a copy because I did update those. So, again, John mentioned this, but all beef and cattle market classes have broken records for the last several years. So, uh, record high prices are not unusual. And uh, in fact, last week we set all kinds of records. Uh, the, both the live cattle and feeder cattle futures were record high last week on Wednesday. Now they did back off on Thursday and Friday, back up yesterday and down again today. So that's that volatility that John mentioned and that is just going to be with us. But they were record high less than a week ago. All time record high in life of contract high. The cash fed cattle market, I've got a chart to show you, was record high last week. And the feeder cattle Again, we're record high last week, and unlike the futures that uh, stumbled a little bit today in Oklahoma City, the cash market there today was the, was up again on calves, and uh, just some more on that in a little while too. So, you know, down there at the bottom, what could derail prices? Well, from a fundamental supply and demand standpoint, we're in good shape, and and into 2015 there. Uh, we could set a record again next year for sure. The first part of 2015, we're going to be above 2014 because we went up the entire year. But by the end of the year, uh, next year, we expect prices to be uh, similar to where they are now. There's a chance, and then when you look at the Fed cattle futures, that they could even be a little lower. But we could break an annual record. We will be higher in the first part of the year and have to see what happens in the second part of the year with with uh, corn and, and particularly for the for feeder cattle. So I like to show charts. I don't like to have word slides, but if I only had to show you one slide tonight, it would be this one because it simply highlights uh, the conditions and why we have record high prices and uh, what's going on there. You know, only two things affect prices and that's supply and demand. It's just that there are a lot of factors under demand and a lot of factors under supply. But what we have, of course, and you're all aware of this, is we have an extremely short supply of cattle. Um, demand is good. It's getting better and probably next year will be better. But, you know, on the supply side, our feeder cattle supply is very, very tight. I've got a chart to show you on that. Plus, we're keeping more heifers back, so the supply is available for uh, feeding are a lot less. Our beef production is going to be down, has been down 6% so far this year and it's likely to be down 6% for the entire year. Steer slaughter down 3, heifer slaughter down 9, beef cow slaughter down 18%, dairy cow slaughter 10%. So, I mean, our slaughter is way down and our 
birds have been liquidated and when we're trying to rebuild, then uh, uh, we take our slaughter down. On the demand side, again, kind of surprising to a lot of people is how strong our exports have been, our quantity so far, and we're about a month and a half to two months always behind on getting the final data. Even with record high prices and the dollar increasing quite substantially to many other currencies, we're actually still 1% higher on quantity and of course with the record high prices, our value of our exports are up 13%. Byproduct value again is due to the export market because we export a lot of our byproducts including our hides and, and tongues, livers, everything else is record high. About Right now, $16.50 per hundredweight on a live fed steer is due to the byproduct value alone. That's up a couple dollars from last year. On the domestic economy, uh, our economy is improving slowly, and it's probably will you know keep improving slowly. North Dakota is the exception where we're booming, but you know the Detroit's and the LA's and New York City. You know, more people are working, unemployment is falling slowly, so those are good signs for peddling meat, particularly at the high prices. And then, of course, another unexpected thing that happened this year on the demand side is we had lower pork and poultry production than we originally had thought, uh, PED and hogs, and then some uh, genetic problems in poultry. That will and is turning around for 2015, so that's kind of a concern for the second half of next year, particular on fed cattle, is that we're going to have a lot more meat there. So, with those words, then we'll just look at the charts. Again, John mentioned price volatility, and this slide I just kind of like to use because it shows over a longer time here during the ethanol era and so on how volatile prices have been, but you know, the run-up in cattle, and, and, and this is just nearby corn and feeder cattle futures, has just been phenomenal because, I don't know if that's my pen here or not, no. I was going to try to find my pen so I could do a little bit of writing. Yeah. Forget it, I'll just kind of Third use my, one. I'll just use it, yeah, okay, I'll just use my cursor. Anyway, in 2010, feeder cattle futures were $90, and now they're 130 that blue line there. So, you know, just in the last four years, just a phenomenal run-up. And, of course, corn has been all over the board. We've had $8 corn, and now today the nearby is 357 was up 11 cents to get it up to 357 So... Uh, just a lot of volatility. There is a kind of an opposite relationship there that I'll show you next between corn and feeder cattle. So, uh, you know, we don't know what the corn crop is going to be next year. For sure we know we're going to have fewer acres of corn, but we don't know what weather is going to be. And uh, the change in corn prices and the opposite change in feeder cattle can be quick, like it was back in 2012. And, uh, you know, when we at $164, the black line here is cattle. Just think of that we have a lot of black cattle, and the green line is corn. It's, when it's growing, it's yellow now, and so that's the difference. But, you know, in one month, we adjusted from 164 feeder cattle down to 140, and corn went from uh, $5 up to you know, way up to $8 in just a month there. So, you know, things can happen fast. That could happen next year. I'm not saying that it, that it will happen, but it's a concern and, you know, something to be aware of. And this year then come down to uh, a much more gradual change. We dropped corn that, uh, you know, was up about $5 a bushel. Corn just went down from May all the way through now. Uh, and uh, and, on, and then on the other side, uh, feeder cat. You know, as corn went down every day, feeder cattle went up every day. So we went from uh, 180 up to 240, and now we've backed off to 230. But anyway, uh, we have to keep corn in the back of our minds in moving into into the next year's outlook that I'll give you in a minute. So again, a little bit on. Feeder cattle supplies, of course, are 
lower than they have been for many, many years. I just go back to 1984 here. Uh, last year is missing, missing because uh, just remember that uh, uh, we didn't do a July cattle inventory report last year because of budget concerns and so, uh, but it would have been kind of right in between here. Here's our feeder cattle supply outside of feedlots on July 1st. And that's the reason we have record high feeder cattle prices is just because we uh, have such a small supply of them. And on the replacement heifer side, this is actually January 1st, but we've been increasing replacement heifers. That takes calves out of the uh, you know feedlot uh, sector there. And coming up January 1st, that feeder cattle supply is probably even going to be lower because we had a lower calf crop this year and we're, this replacement heifer category is going to be higher. And so uh, again, on, on the feeder cattle side available for feedlots, we're going to be very, very uh, short there. On, you know, I didn't bring the slide, but on North Dakota here on the replacements, we have quite an opposite situation. If I showed you the North Dakota slide, actually North Dakota replacements the last several years here have been the highest. In fact, 2013 was the was the third highest ever number of replacements we had all the way back to 1920. So, be a much different slide here because we have been expanding in North Dakota. Go to these calf pricing again. John talked about that, but we just had a phenomenal run this year, as you're well aware of. Last year we were talking at this time about. Uh, uh, calf prices uh, there in, in 2013 at you know about a dollar 74 or something now or you know by the end of October approaching 180 now they're 280 so we had a hundred dollar change in calf prices in a year so yeah John's right they're expensive again uh, with this rapid run-up, everybody's asking how much further can they go or are they going to go down? And the answer to how much further they, can they go is all based on corn. And so what we've been saying all along is as long as corn keeps going down, feeder cattle are going to keep going up. But uh, corn now has stabilized. In fact, corn prices are up uh, 30 seven cents in October alone. They went down all the way through September. But in October here, just in the two weeks in October, they went up 37 cents. So corn is pretty well stabilized, probably not going to go any lower. And that means that that's going to put the lid on feeder cattle, but at record high levels. And again, volatility, maybe I'll talk about uh, just a little bit more at the end. But and, and we did see the $3 down on futures today. That was for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is corn went up 11 cents today. Uh, fed cattle backed off some today. Even though the cutout value was up today, fed cattle were off some. And it's, you know, we're ramping up pork and poultry production. And that's starting to show up. And so, at least from the futures market standpoint, that's a concern. The other thing is... You know, if you watched throughout the day on the futures today, they were actually up a little bit there until 10 o'clock, between 10 and 10.15. They fell a dollar, then they stabilized, and then about noon they fell the other two dollars just in about five minutes. That is, the uh, funds are were bailing out of the market. The funds like uh, bull markets, and so they have pulled out drastically out of the grain market because it went down, 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 and again, they're hedging against inflation, and so they like to be, be go along, and so they have went to other things, although the last remaining place for the ones that do like to have some commodities has been the hog market earlier that then changed, and now the cattle market, and it's just today, they, they watch charts very closely, and some reversal on the charts, and so it was the funds bailing out, but now, uh, on the futures market side, actually the cash market, the nearby cash market, the CME cash settlement and, and cash prices are uh, just for the nearby October feeder cattle futures are the cash market is several dollars above the futures 
And uh, again, the October closes here the last Thursday of the month, only a couple weeks away. And so they have to be the same on that date. So that's going to put, uh, you know, somewhat a floor on. We're not going to see futures just down $3 uh, down the limit or uh, continuing down at a drastic pace. But, but anyway, in the longer term outlook out here in these calf prices, we've stabilized them here at these levels. There is a... Winter wheat is really the best winter wheat we've had in the South for quite a number of years. I just talked to my counterparts in Oklahoma and Texas, Colorado today, and we had a conference call. And there's a really good demand on, for winter wheat calves because the cheap gain is gonna gonna dry up anyway, and so that's you know helping to spark these lightweight calves down in that country that we haven't seen too. But again. Stabilize them here, maybe could even back off when the heavy runs start here, a, a few dollars by the end. And next year again, then we'll be above that, you know, up in that 260 plus area for the next year. And again, depends on whether it rains and then how many corn acres does it look we're going to get and so on. But by the end of the year, where we are next year, likely to be, you know, in this similar category. We aren't going to see another hundred dollar increase in prices if that's what you're hoping for, but you know, still at, at good levels here. Switch to the heavier weight cattle in again, uh, about eighty dollars above where they were last year. We've got the futures on there. We're right around 240 now and these futures are a, a couple days uh, old and and uh, but, but again, the nearby October futures now are today are 239, and uh, going to the November futures, the next one there at 237. And back them off a little bit more than that into the January, and at, as not today is at 231, and the March at 229. So anyway, that then. The futures kind of says the same thing I said on calves, is that the market is kind of leveled off. We'll be above next, next year we'll be above where we were this year at the beginning of the year, but, uh, you know, closer to where we are now at the end of the year. And we don't, and, you know, it's not impossible, but uh, further large increases are just not expected there. Uh, John kind of mentioned uh, some... Uh, Prices here, and this is last week's weekly summary. I just want you to kind of concentrate on this. You know, like he said, AMS is usually reporting four markets in North Dakota, and now they're only in the last few weeks only reporting one or two because the calves aren't coming to market yet because still harvest going on. It's wet out there. There's grass, but on these 550 to six weight calves at the two markets, there were only a hundred of them. But look at the range in price there. The range in price there is is you know from from uh, 265 to 290 an average of 281 so there's a wide range in cap prices that range when the heavy run hits is probably even going to be wider than that because of the, all the different factors that affect calves but when we get to a budget that I'm going to show you again uh, 265 works better than 290 and so that's all part of the equation if you're buying calves and or pricing your own uh, calves there and here's the heifers. John mentioned heifers that are being discounted. So you go to those 550 to six weight heifers. Again, they're lower than uh, steers. And uh, but you know these replacement quality heifers. If you go and there's some 552s at over three dollars or more than steers. And so we're going to see more and more of that. The further closer we get to spring, the more demand. Replacement heifers are going to be so we're going to see heifers selling at or above steer prices for the for the for the very good replacements. But right now, some of these market heifers are cheaper, and I agree with John. That's will be a good opportunity. A little bit on slaughter steers because that does affect feeder cattle prices. Again, this past week we were record high uh, on them at uh, you know at uh, uh, at all time record high prices. The previous record high this year was the end of July, which usually is a seasonal low, but that was now. Had a lot of factors going on, very short of slaughter steers and retailers short bought and bought them back up. But now, last week, we're record high on slaughter steers. And again, the futures 
you know, are at least still indicating this is the top futures are for this year. Indicating even some more improvement is possible a little bit by the end of the year. And next year be above what they were at the beginning, but again, by next year could be a little bit lower on the futures, especially if, uh, you know, depending on how we wrap up pork production. So, move along here then, as John mentioned, calves are very, very expensive. Should we sell them or should we do some backgrounding? And yeah, if you sell them, like he showed, you're going to get $1,500 for some of those steers. I have a budget here on my website. Just Google livestock economics. It's not much different than John's. Uh, these are 550 in and 750 out going two and three quarter pounds a day. It's, you know, he showed you about a $50 on them and I'm showing you about a $50. What I just wanted to show you is, you know, we've brought calf prices up from 174 was my the budget that I think I showed you last year. We had 174 calves in. We were projecting 155 out. We had four dollar corn, and we were projecting a fifty dollar profit. This year, 280 in, 230 out, 260 corn, and it's still fifty dollars. So every year at this time, the market says that people need fifty dollars to background steers, and so that's what it offered. Last year we turned off a lot, turned out a lot better because prices kept going up. Instead of 155, we sold them for 170 or more, and so instead of making 50, we made 150. We don't expect that to happen. Carl's laughing there, huh. uh, but we don't expect that run up in, in prices, and the futures don't indicate it. Is it possible? Well, yeah, if corn crashes or something else isn't, but we don't expect that to happen this year. So. Again, uh, then I just did some sensitivity here of calf prices versus out prices for the 750s and what profit might be. Again, I was at 280 in and 230 out, my, so my $50 is right in there. But we go down to those 265 calves that I showed you, uh, you know, that were at the market. We had 265 to 290 calves on that market last week, and so that makes a big change in potential there of profits. So maybe adding some value to some cheaper calves is a way you can background. Uh, you know, some people John mentioned corn, and some people kind of question my 260 corn because it's 180 or something in my head, I guess, or you know, at birth old there, just over two, but. At these prices of feeder cattle and at lower corn prices, actually corn prices don't make a big difference. Again, you know, if we take $275 calves, you know, corn prices from $220 to $3, you're only increasing the break even by about $2 a hundredweight, you know, right in there about $219. So we can have a wide range in corn prices there doesn't affect the break-even price that much. And so, uh, again, uh, corn price is all over the board. So, a lot of price risk management strategies. Uh, last year, I'll show you a chart in a minute, I guess they didn't work. Maybe some floor protection might be warranted in case some catastrophic event does happen or, or uh, whatever. And, you know, kind of pick your poison here. Uh, which is best is, you know, easy for me to say, and if we're going to continue to have an uptrend like we did last year, the cash market is best. If we're going to have a downtrend, you know, pre-pricing them now, futures or forward contracting some would be the best. If you don't know what they're going to do or if you want some floor, then doing an option or LRP, uh, you know, gives you some floor protection but leaves the upside potential open as well. So, again, here's the March feeder cattle futures. They've just been up, up, and up. We backed them off, and again, we're down the limit today, but we don't expect them to crash on uh, down by $20 or so on. But again, as John mentioned, volatility is going to be the name of the game, and uh, so it's not expect unexpected that we'll see limit movements and we'll, you know, down and, and some movement up and 
And but you know we're pretty toppy here on the chart again, and so our expectations of much higher futures into prices into March are not expected this year like happened last year. Uh, last year, of course, on the bottom here, futures kept going up all the time, so price protection was not necessary. We go back to 2013 here in October, where we had $150 futures. It depends. In 2013, it all depended on when you priced your calves in and the, and the backgrounded cattle out. If you priced them in in October here and you came out in January, you did okay if you priced them in later, you know, in say in December, and then you didn't bring them out till March, you lost money backgrounding. So again, it's kind of a, you know, and price protection would have been warranted. So it's a timing issue, and uh, and uh, you know that's all part of the volatility that we're dealing with. So anyway, Carl, I'm going to quit there. I don't know if you want to take a question or. Move along, but I'm finished. We have. Uh, is there any questions out there for Tim on this? Tim, I've been looking through the numbers and going, really, it's been a four hundred and fifty to six hundred dollar per head increase compared to last year. Yeah, we were we're a hundred dollars higher. It's yeah, absolutely on caps. We, we talk about our memory is usually nine months long. We forget about what happened a year ago. Yes. Well. And it's That's what happened. It's not going just, to happen again <laughs> this year. What? So then I'll think. beg the question, <laughs> how about it going down? How quick might it go down? Is it going to happen well, within one year, two years, or no, one I, BSE? You know, no, fun, yeah, if we have a catastrophic event, yes, and then like I said, we need to watch corn next year. We're going to have fewer acres of corn. That is a given. We're going to plant more beans, less corn. And and and, and um, less double cropping corn for sure in the corn belt. How many acres are going to go down? We still don't know. Um, now everybody's watching Brazil for their soybean crop and their corn crop will determine prices in the spring to help plant these. But we're going to have less corn, and so we're going to have to have good weather because we need a lot of corn because we're going to we you know we're still using corn and ethanol although we backed off prices so. That's the thing to watch this spring is, is, is acres and corn prices. But, but otherwise, fundamentally, we're going to have less feeder cattle next year than we have this year. So supplies are going to remain very tight. Again, with, you know, demand is improving on the fed cattle side. So we we'll hope, should hold calf prices at good levels again next year and even the, you know, the next year. But I think the, the, the advance is over. The, the, the uptrend. Well, from a cow calf producing standpoint, that's just excellent news to hear. Yes, <laughs> so, yeah. thanks, Tim. If you're margining and buying calves and selling, yeah, that's a margin business. But the cow calf sector is going to be very well rewarded this year and in the next couple of years.